nowadays sometimes again we find unfortunately that many many of those who hold the position of guru try to escape criticism and they are terrified about that for whatever reason there are many possible reasons you know they wanted to risk position and fame and benefits of all that so they escape criticism they try to escape apology they try to escape rectification that may be required but the point is that's not the, the, the behavior of a true genuine guru basically that's the opposite of that no? even even a guru or a devotee should apologize in some cases you may unintentionally hurt other people it was not an intention but it happened you should be able to apologize what to speak of intentional mistakes now, the famous example is that of Rupa Goswami that he was once in Samadhi meditating on the Leela and Radha and Krishna were playing and there was some funny moment and he laughed and externally one crippled person came and he saw Rupa Goswami laughing and he felt oh he's laughing at my crippledness he felt bad and left and Rupa Goswami his bhajan was interrupted because of that so he immediately thought I may have offended or make some bhajan feel uncomfortable and he look for the person and beg forgiveness although it was not his intention <laughs> so my point is if a bhajan is willing to do so what to speak if you are actually doing some mistake how much more you should acknowledge that and even sometimes gurus it's rather mal Prabhu points like genuine gurus often allow the pub to public the public to witness their own correction in order to set the precedent for the rest of society to promote education and healing on, on a more societal level it's inspiring imagine if you see a senior begging forgiveness in in a senior like way that's inspiring and, and and only then you can get a reference reference to how should i do that when i do that when i make a mistake how to act if i don't have the reference from a role model from a senior <laughs> there i may think oh that's not to be done so you need a proper example of how to beg forgiveness and so on so it's a very sad condition sometimes to see in our times rectification is uh, not acknowledged or if it's acknowledged sometimes only because of public pressure because it reached such a level that you just have to you are forced by circumstance and of course that helps because people is informed about what actually happened and everyone can learn from what to do or what not to do in some cases and of course social media we already spoke a lot about social media can be really abused and misused to engage in apparat unhealthy criticism and gossip of any possible kind but also sometimes social media can help to point at some of these unrecognized issues and give rise to some nice deep mature discussions interactions and transformation even through online platforms that, that's our hope that's the purpose for us of social media mm. because again if if it were not be for social media sometimes some of these abuse or toxic patterns we may never know about them mm. so <clears throat> so again whenever some of these mistakes happen in the case of some biasti guru sometimes maybe mild mistake it doesn't necessarily to be publicly acknowledged if a guru forgot a verse in a class <laughs> Not in, okay we won't force him to publicly apologize <laughs> But if it's some grave mistake or something, that, that should be dealt with accordingly. Because if we do not deal with those imperfections for the for the Vyasti Gurus, again, the dignity of the infallible Samasti Guru principle may be affected in the eyes of some, in the eyes of us, probably, our faith. 